Hi everyone, it's Neil here from Zen Software and in today's video we're going to look at the human risk report within you Secure. So here we are uh, logged in as our MSP account and this is probably the usual view that you see where you add to new customers and you potentially could bring them on as a trial or convert them into a fully paid for customer. But there's actually a stage before this that you can use to bring on new prospects and introduce them to you Secure. So under the you service section here you'll see there's a section called prospects and this is uh, it's a great feature because this allows you to bring on a prospect um, which effectively is a customer that you introduce into you secure and give them an upfront risk report of the current status of their users and their domain and that will allow you to then sell the concept of you secure to them um, and, and convert them into a trial to do a more detailed um, analysis on them so first thing I want to introduce is you can see here I've got several prospects ongoing and there's actually a feature at the top, the priority tasks, that uh, highlights all of the tasks that you as an MSP should be doing next with each of these customers. Um, I've got several uh, examples ongoing here so it's a bit busy but generally speaking you'd have two or three ongoing prospects. And each stage is you're being walked through all of the process that you need to do for each prospect um, and it's telling you at each stage that you're at. So you can see here that the first thing that you would do is, is request a, a breach scan for a customer. Um, so let, let's start with an example. So let's bring on a new prospect. So all you do is simply click on create prospect, give them a name, I'll just do an example here, select their uh, domain. So in here we'll just do prospect.com. And then here where you choose an email address, you've got two choices. You can either use an email address for the customer, uh, in which case you're interacting with them through this process. So at each stage, it will, it will send them an email to ask them, are they happy to have a breach scan um, done and a domain scan done? Uh, and they have to acknowledge that for it to then go to the next stage. Um, what we found with most of our MSPs is they actually prefer to do this themselves, so they put in their own email address here. So I'll just put in my own uh, send software address here. Okay. If I can, uh, yeah, not spell my own domain right. There we go. <laughs> That's a bit better. Uh, so this way I'll get both sides of the email communication. Um, it will be prompting me for the next steps, but it will also be uh, asking me if I'm happy to proceed to the next step. And we found that makes most sense with uh, new prospects because that way as an MSP, you can pull the information together, build this risk report, which is ultimately what we're trying to do, check that information before then presenting it to the customer. So once you've uh, added those details, we'll just say yes, we want to start the risk um, report process and we'll let that go. So that's started a, a new prospect and that should be down the bottom of my list, uh, or it would be if I, I refresh. Uh, there it is, prospect, so it's, it's at the first stage, so it's now doing a domain scan in the background and that will take it a minute or two to pull in information about the domain and move on to the next stage. So I won't go through every step, but fundamentally the steps are that it will request a domain scan, it'll come back and then ask if you want to do a breach scan. Now in order to do a breach scan, um, it needs to know email addresses of users to, to look for uh, breach information on, which is the, the U breach feature up here, but it's pulling it all together into a single report. So for example here, if I request a breach scan, the next stage it will say, oh I need to add the users, and we'd select add users, that would take me to that particular prospect uh, and ask me to go into them. It's telling you the steps here. So you're basically just following this guide and it's telling me to go and add the users in the users page, which I could either do manually or I could import them from a CSV file or integrate them at this stage. If you know their Office 365 um, tenant information, you could integrate it and pull the users in that way. It doesn't really matter how you get the users into you secure. It's just important to get as many users as you can at this stage so that when you perform the breach scan, it's lots of information. You're going to get a good overview of the entire company. So once you've run um, or added the users rather, if we go back to uh, the MSP view, it would allow it to do the breach scan and then the next stage is to then set up a, a phishing campaign. And the phishing campaign um, is quite nice because it actually gives you three examples to choose from. Um, the spear phishing campaign is the one that we'd highly recommend. If 
we just quickly look at that guide. It's, it's nice and simple. It's the holiday policy change request, um, but it's pre-populated this for you. So it's a great example. If you want to, you can quite quickly just edit the information within the email that's sent out in the phishing campaign. It may be that you want to change the name to a real person um, because you know the company and you know who would be likely to send this information. Sometimes people add uh, you know, an image onto the end to put a signature in there or they might add a block of text. Um, it doesn't really matter how you edit this but the idea is you do this nice and quickly. Let's get a quick phishing campaign together uh, and, and um, configure that and send that through to the end users. What I would recommend when you're setting up a prospect, because this is likely the first time you've sent any phishing emails from Usecure to this prospect, uh, select it to go in the future. So you might select it a few hours in the future from, from now, uh, send it over a few hours. So when you create the simulation, oh, I need to select some recipients here, so I'd send it to all of the users. When you select the simulation and you send it, it gives you time to go and set up the advanced delivery. It's very important that if you're, especially if you're, this is for 365 customers, you set up advanced delivery, you set up any IP allow list to guarantee that these phishing emails get through to the customer. So that's a little trick that I do, just set it a few hours in the future, uh, and that way you've got the time then to go and make those changes before those phishing emails go through. Uh, so I won't send this one right away. What I want to do is, is skip forward a stage. So imagine we've sent the phishing campaign to that customer. It's alerted me to say that phishing campaign is complete. Are we happy with information? It would go through then to the final stage, um, which is that uh, you can effectively, you've got a report and you want to upgrade them to a prospect. So let's have a look at this customer here, this uh, sample risk report, because this one I've gone through right to the final end. Um, I'm slightly in the way there, but you can see that you can admin this just like you would a customer, but at this stage, this is pre-trial. There's, there's no trial ongoing, there's no time limit. We've gone through this process and we can leave them. We can delete them and rerun them if we want to start to get on this particular prospect. Um, there we go, so I'm getting emails to tell me that that scan's complete. So this is the sort of email you report you would get through as you run different prospects on different customers. Um, but here, if we go to open the risk report, So this is effectively what you are, you're building um, as the end result. It's giving you a final risk score that you can then pass on to the customer to say, you know, how risky does um, your current domain look like? And you get lots of information here. You get a, an overview of the connected domains that are relevant for this particular customer. This is obviously just example information. Um, Lookalike domains is really powerful. That allows you to sort of go through with the customer and say, well, all of these domains, you know, which one of these are your domain and which one of these are not your domain? Now, some of them, you know, stand out, but there's, there's examples in here that, you know, you'd be hard pushed to realize that that is a different domain to the test domain that we're using. And it's all clever character shifting and, uh, and, and different um, uh, character sets that it's using to, to, to show that there are different domains that can easily be confused. And you've got things like the connected application, which goes online and looks up as much public information about the domains that it can. And it's starting to give you ideas about different um, services and usually the, the, the domain registration that this particular customer may be using. And that's useful information because that allows you to say, well, a, a potential spammer could know that you're using a particular um, uh, service provider or domain provider and can start then doing spear phishing campaigns against that provider. Uh, you know, pret pretending to be that provider, offering services, offering quick um, uh, updates that are available. Anything that you know about a customer is useful information. This is explained in these blue sections. So if you get a report, have a read through the section because um, that helps you explain it to the customer. Uh, then they, you've got the results of the breach scan, so it's telling me that 27% of my users are in a high-risk breach. You get a little bit of information about what those breaches were, so you can you know, run through those with the customer and find out if they were aware that their users were using these services and were their information, where their information has been breached. And then further down, you've got your phishing campaign results. So this is the results of that one phishing campaign, but you can see in this example, 77% of the recipients opened the email, 52% of the recipients actually clicked on the link to go to the landing page, and of those, 33% were compromised. 
um, which is you know the standard sort of results but quite scary information and you can see that from that it's determined that the time it took to set up this scan and run through a targeted campaign um, to get a breached user and effectively um, compromise the system was one hour 29 minutes. It was that easy. And that's the, the final sort of figure that you're, you're showing uh, you know, an example of how easy it is to, to breach them as a customer. A little bit of summary information about why it's important and what you should do moving forward. Um, and effectively, this gives you then the uh, the information to, to ask the customer, okay, are you ready now to go on to a trial of you secure? Let's uh, bring you on board, let's do some more targeted phishing campaigns. Bear in mind at this stage, you've already got all of those users, you've got the platform set up, it's just a simple case of saying convert to a trial, set up a campaign and leave it running in the background and hopefully that will then lead through to a, a paid for customer. If you want to show this uh, report to the customer directly, you can obviously either you know, do a remote session and show it on your own computer, but that URL is a one-time URL specifically linked to this report. So you can include that in an email if you want them to sort of navigate through uh, the, 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 the report themselves. We tend to find that the best results are when you as the MSP talks the customer through that information. So hopefully you found that useful and uh, see you next time. Thank you.